So when I look at like, toxin exposure through the quantum lens, I want to know how significantly it impacts a few things. How significantly does it impact mitochondrial function? How significantly can it impair or in, uh, impact our connective tissue? And what can it do to the water network of our body, which as uh, you may may or may not know, I talk about a ton because it is this beautiful water that's called EZ or exclusion zone water that has very unique properties associated with it in comparison to the typical wa liquid water that we see in a glass. The vast majority of the water inside of our bodies, including the water that is found intracellularly, as well as even around the collagen itself, is in this phase of water called EZ water. So we've got a lot of this exclusion zone water inside of our bodies. So when, again, when I'm thinking about toxins, I want to know, are they going to impact any of those things? Because those understanding or supporting mitochondrial health and exclusions on water levels and what I call our quantum connective tissue network of the body plays a key role in the body being able to optimize its health at the level of what we would call biophysics. Essentially, the ability for cells to maintain charge, the ability to funnel electrons and protons where they're needed. So it's a level below biochemistry, right? It's what's happening with the protons and the electrons and the photons and those interactions inside of the body. And unfortunately, fluoride has the ability to impair each of those areas. And I'll talk a little bit about how in a second. But first, I want you to know where your clients might be exposed to fluoride. That can drive mitochondrial dysfunction, low levels of exclusion zone water, and issues with the collagen, specifically the collagen in, in the connective tissue. Now, side note, for all of you collagen and fashion nerds, the collagen, as it forms these triple helices, these helical structures bind together. And when seven of them bind together and look very much like a flower with a, with a um, central central circle or central bundle, this actually has been shown to form something called water nanotubes all throughout the body. And so if we have these water nanotubes, it turns out that those water nanotubes are literally these channels through which we can funnel electricity and pro protonicity anywhere it's needed to reestablish healthy function in the body. And so if that, the ability of collagen to, to form and form those triple helices and bundle together, if that gets impacted in any way, we absolutely impair this high-speed communication network that literally connects every single cell of the body all the way deep into the cells, including all the way into the nucleus where we find the DNA. So where do we find fluoride? Where, do our, where might our clients be expo exposed to fluoride on a regular basis? Well, number one, look at what we're actually putting in our personal care products, right? So fluoride can absolutely be found in things like toothpaste. So I tell clients to eliminate that if at all possible. I tell clients if they feel comfortable with this, say no to fluoride treatments at the dentist's office. I tell clients also to be aware of fluoridation of their water. Fluoride was added to the water system and my particular part of the country actually was pretty much responsible for this, was adding fluoride to the water system in order to um, have an effect on protecting the teeth, right? For, for dental health. Turns out that that hasn't, that hasn't panned out and ingestion of fluoride in the water from the water itself can impair a lot of different functions in the body that I'm gonna talk about. And so water needs to be filtered. And remember, in order to filter toxins like that out of the water, we must use a reverse osmosis or a distillation type filter. Now there are some countertop gravity feed systems such as the ones found at Greenfield Water Solutions that can also be used as a means of filtering out those toxins. But filtering out the toxins is, is oftentimes not enough for us to actually then absorb the water. So I talked about this in um, a previous video about how in order for the body to truly want to absorb the water we drink, yes, it must be free of toxins, but some minerals must be added back into it in order for that the wa uh, water to have a charge to it or to have um, a, a means of wanting to pull the fluid in to reestablish healthy blood volume. And then at the same time, that water is better absorbed when it's structured. Lots of uh, information in, in um, various courses that I teach, including module two for practitioners, all about exclusions on water um, and hydration strategies. So that is part of my practitioner training program. Uh, it's, it's a practitioner pyramid, essentially, that lays the foundation that I use in clinical practice to support my client's health through a circadian and quantum lens. And so um, we want to make sure that the water that our clients are consuming is fluoride-free, toxin-free, 
remineralized, and then structured as well. Very important, I found, in order for people to actually absorb the water that they're drinking. So there we have it, right? We've got the fluoride that could be in the water. Now, two, I think, potentially overlooked areas where fluoride exposure can hit our clients in higher amounts. The first one is, is um, fluoride actually that's found in a certain class of antibiotics called fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones are things like ciprofloxacin, right? There's a class of fluoroquinolone antibiotics um, that have actually been shown to can, that can create massive mitochondrial dysfunction in a very short period of time. So we can have a just couple one-time dosage or you know a short-term dosage of antibiotics that can lead a lasting can have a lasting impact on mitochondrial health and in these other areas that I'm about to talk about um, because of how fluor how toxic fluoride can be um, to the mitochondria. Another area where we see a fluoride exposure that I just became aware of recently, and I want to shout out to Rachel, who is a, a doctor who has been through the quantum biology certification program through the Institute of Applied Quantum Biology, and also through my private mentorship community and is now in my practitioner um, support group. And um, she used to be an anesthesiologist, and she pointed out that a vast majority of the anesthesia that she has used uh, or had used in her um, medical career is actually fluoride-based as well. So think about clients who potentially aren't necessarily having fluoridated toothpaste, they're not necessarily drinking fluoridated water, but they have potentially have had general anesthesia at some point in their life that gave them, or oftentimes multiple times in their life that have given them large exposures to fluoride in one given setting. And so, okay, lots of fluoride exposures. So how can it actually impact each of these different systems? Well, as I alluded to before, a lot of studies are linking fluoride exposure to mitochondrial dysfunction. So um, it can lead to um, impaired mitochondrial, mitochondrial um, DNA, uh, the ability of the mitochondria to essentially allow their DNA to replicate, um, impair mitochondrial uh, membrane potential, right? You got a lot of ways where the mitochondria can be impacted by fluoride exposure. So, so fluoride, there you go. Mitochondria can be impaired. What about things like exclusion zone water? Well, exclusion zone water is, remember, the water inside of our cells. It's around the extracellular matrix. It lines the blood vessels themselves to help promote healthy blood flow. Blood flow. It, um, it's found in the connective tissue, right? Around all proteins and, and all hydrophilic surfaces, we're forming this exclusion zone water. And this exclusion zone water acts as a way that the body stores charge. Or another way to say it is that in order for a human body to be of optimum health, we need healthy amounts of intracellular negative charge. And it turns out that the water, the exclusion zone water alone has the ability to store that charge and hold that charge inside of our cells. So if our mitochondria are dysfunctional and can't make water in the first place, that's gonna be a diminishment of exclusions on water. And if the water that we're drinking contains fluoride, right, that's gonna present an issue as well. And these things can combine to uh, not only diminish the amount of exclusions on water we have in our bodies, but actually what fluoride does when, uh, what fluoride can do to transform a, that particular property of the water's ability to store charge or hold charge is that it does something called lowering water's dielectric constant, dielectric constant. Dielectricity is simply, you know, can something hold charge or store charge? And water, um, liquid water has a lower dielectric constant than exclusions on water, the structured water inside of our bodies. The structured water has uh, ha obviously has a higher di dielectric constant because unlike liquid water in a glass that doesn't store charge, the water inside of us is designed to. So imagine if we have fluoride toxicity, and that can be a one-time event such as fluoroquinolones, or it could be a long-term chronic exposure such as fluoridated water, and we prevent the water in our body from being able to store this healthy charge that we need for healthy cellular function and healthy just vitality in general. So that's another thing that we're looking at with fluoride and its ability to prevent the exclusions on, water, exclusions on water from storing that beautiful charge that's needed. Lastly, fluoride also impacts the connective tissue, specifically impacting collagen. Now, Remember, collagen is forming these beautiful triple helices, and we need them to form these beautiful triple helices. But unfortunately, 
when floor when when the body is being exposed to regular amounts of fluoride what we start to see is that fluoride impairs collagen's ability to form in the first place. And in fact, consumption of fluoride uh, activates an enzyme called collagenase, which is an enzyme that's designed to break down collagen in the first place. So not only actually is fluoride affecting the synthesis or the formation of collagen, specifically it uh, interferes with a uh, proline's ability. Proline is an amino acid that's a key component of collagen. It impairs proline's ability to be about become incorporated into the collagen. So not only are we uh, getting like that part of it where, where collagen synthesis is being impaired, but then at the same time, we have the increase in the production of this enzyme called collagenase, which is designed to break collagen down. So we can very very much have disruptions in, our, in the collagen system of our bodies, which will have ramifications in our ability to form those water nanotubes that I was talking about. And then also the ability that that impairs what I call this up this high speed quantum communication super highway that we have when the water um when the when you talk about how the water and the collagen can can form this beautiful interconnected network all throughout the body so as a practitioner for fluoride the the best means of allowing the body to get rid of fluoride is to just avoid it in the first place right try try to eliminate its ability or try to eliminate its access to the body that includes filtering bathing water showering water as well and so my product recommendation guide has um, the top quality filters that I have found so far for that. Now I'm hoping that the um, bath and and shower filtration um, you know companies start to get more and more um, just, just get better at their ability to filter out these toxins. They're not, they're not perfect yet. There are some great ones out there, but they're not perfect yet. And so doing the best we can with that with our clients. Also, unfortunately, what happens with fluoride when we consume it regularly or when we're exposed to it regularly, it has the ability to displace iodine wherever the body uses iodine. And one of the main, well, there's a lot of, there's several areas where this can be imp impactful, including the thyroid gland. So we're looking at fluoride impairing um, thyroid function. We find it in the breast tissue. So we're looking at thyroid impairing breast health. And then we also even find it in places like the cerebrospinal fluid. So we're looking at fluoride impacting um, the ability of that fluid to also have a high dielectric constant, right, to, to flow charge. So there's a lot that we there's there's a lot that can be impacted simply because fluoride can displace iodine. So I do um, sometimes in that instance where I feel like iodine has been displaced, I do take clients through a specific protocol uh, to support to support thyroid health in lieu or in the in um, with an appropriate protocol of both things like what I would call a salt water flush support in conjunction with some really great sources of iodine, including whole foods forms of iodine, but also um, potentially the need for iodine supplementation as well. And, you know, prevention of that, prevention of fluoride ingestion, you know, looking at iodine support levels and so, um, the need to support that if possible in clients. And then always, always, always getting our clients who we think are being impacted by these pathways to get infrared light exposure because remember that infrared light actually creates bigger exclusion zones so yes fluoride may be impacting these exclusion zones but at the same time we can continually give our clients a source of infrared to charge those exclusion zones back up as their body is starting to get uh, starting to eliminate the fluoride and then reestablish this healthy charge inside the cells healthy mitochondrial function again so I hope that it was just a little little ditty about uh, <laughs> about fluoride and why we want to think about it through a quantum lens in terms of mitochondrial health, as well as the ability of the exclusions on water to hold this healthy charge for us.